Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna do a little planting and a little bit of garden maintenance. I had intended on just doing garden maintenance today, but there are some things that are looking so pretty. I wanted to show them to you and get them in the ground. So we're gonna lead with that because these are the pretty things to look at. Like, look at these. Three different varieties of blue slash purple uh, things that are in bloom or like just coming into bloom. There's one flower on this Rosa Sharon. This is the Dark Lavender Chiffon. This is a brand new one for this year. I could have waited maybe a few days <laughs> until these buds opened up to show you, but I'm sure we can pop a picture up on the screen. Uh, but I wanted to get this one planted and this one gets big, like eight to 12 feet tall and six to 10 feet wide, I think. like big shrub and then we've got a blue chiffon rosa sharon which i can show you another one in our landscape that's doing really well and i just love this plant and it's a little bit stressed it needs to get out of its container you can see we've got some yellowing of leaves it's just hard to um really get the water right when they're in containers and it's so hot and then you know it starts to cool off anyway yeah it'll be better off in the ground and then we've got more of these beyond midnight caryopteris you guys, these are just so gorgeous. We recently planted a little drift of these out in the South Garden um, on the far side, and I kind of wanted to add these in on the other side, so like toward the berry beds kind of area, because these add so much bright late summer color, and they're so tough, and the pollinators love them. So we recently have talked about these and the stats and that sort of thing. They don't grow enormous. I think like two to two and a half feet tall and wide, if I'm not mistaken. So like a large perennial, really, even though they're a woody shrub. Uh, but they're just, they're just awesome. These are a zone five through nine, as is, I think both of these are a zone five through nine as well. Now the blue chiffon does not grow quite as big. It does get as tall, so eight to 12 feet tall, but I think a little bit more narrow, uh, like upwards of four to six feet, while this one gets quite a bit wider, like almost double that in some cases. So we can tuck this one into an area that doesn't need quite as much space width-wise. And then this one I want to put somewhere where it can just do its thing and go to town. So I've got our seven inch auger, and then there's a bag of biotone tucked in back in there. I think that's all we're going to need. So let's go get this part done. So right now outside it's 86 degrees. It's supposed to get to 102 today and tomorrow and then we drop down to the 80s and it looks like we're gonna stay there um, so anyway it doesn't ever feel like on days where it starts off so cool that it actually gets to the 100 degree mark which is nice but anyway it's just a pleasant day out here kind of want to add some more stuff in here I mean we do have the, a plan on having the pathway come through here but it might be nice to add some of that late summer color in this space. You can also see that we've got like um, pallets of stuff. That's the leaning tower of pavers from around the kitchen area. We've got bricks that they're working off of, um, stones for the pathway that we're working on out there, just a, a menagerie at the moment. I did want to stop and show you guys this little corner that we just have put some beautiful things in it. It's really shaping up. I'm loving it. We've got the limelight primes right here underneath the forest, forest pansy red bud and then Russian sage called sage advice and then there's a light pink salvia back in black sedum. There's a panicum right in there. This is the ruby chip, chip junior that we planted earlier on and they're just growing like I swear they at least doubled in size so pretty and then the new brand new lavender crush hibiscus just taken to this spot and going for it they look so good hmm i feel like we need some more evergreen interest in here but maybe we could do a blue rosa sharon right in here maybe the lavender one i think that's maybe a better spot not a whole lot going on out here at the moment we do have black lace elderberries, which look a little sad right now. There's one here, here, and right over there. But they will, uh, next year, you'll be amazed at how much grow they, growth they put on. Uh, so I don't really want to get in the way of those. And I'm really thinking uh, maybe right, right in where I set that, we probably want some evergreen interest. Dang it. Let's see. <laughs> maybe we could pop this right in here. That might be nice. We have a hoopside blue spruce, which will grow, oh, I don't know, 15 feet wide. And this Norway will get quite large. So it might be kind of nice to have just a little bit of color peeking through in the end right there. I like that. Okay guys, I'm gonna get that one planted, then I'll place and plant the rest of them. I do just the same thing, just kind of walk around with the plant until I find a spot that feels right for that plant to go. 
I'm kind of in a weird spot out here. Even though there's tons of space to fill, I still need to finish the rock uh, walkway out here. And I feel like until that's done, I really don't want to put any massive things kind of, you know, like nearby where that's going to go just in case I need to shift things a little bit. And then also I'm at a position where I know I need to be adding more evergreen interest. I really need to focus on that uh, because we do want to block views and make it look a little bit more private and secret, I guess, secret garden feel in here and have a really nice thick border, especially around the outsides. So that's going to need to be something that I focus on this fall. And I don't want to put a bunch of, you know, deciduous shrubs in places where I may need evergreens. So I'm trying to be careful about where I place things, especially things that get eight to 12 feet tall and six to 10 feet wide. That's big. Okay, guys, let's do it. the prettiest little pockets to pop these beyond midnights but I wanted to show you <laughs> why these were doing so well in their containers look at this they were rooted into the ground out where we kind of keep a lot of our stuff you know waiting for projects so they never tipped over in windstorms they were getting tons of nutrients and moisture from the ground underneath them so they are happy campers but now, like I'm faced with either having to cut these roots off, which you could do, but it's still pretty hot. So I'm gonna try not to uh, shock them too much. So I'm cutting the whole container off this root ball. The last one was a lot harder than this one. Looks like it's just coming out the center. This one, hold on. Look at that one. It's like coming out all of the holes there. So let me show you what I'm doing here. I just have my Falcos. They're pretty flimsy plastic, so they cut pretty easily. I hate to waste a pot. I use these pots to pot up stuff in the greenhouse early in the season. But in this case, I think it's gonna help the plant. goodness we'll rough up the roots underneath them a little bit there look at that
think they all ended up in great spots. So both rows of Sharon's I ended up popping over here because I feel like in this corner especially, once that Royal Frost Birch gets to full size and the Corinthian Linden and these two evergreens, we're gonna want some more um, soft kind of color back in this space. So I tucked the blue chiffon right here, which this one doesn't need quite as much space and this spot might be a little bit more narrow, I guess. You know, eventually it's gonna compete with the canopy of the Linden, but we can trim this one down. And I like to keep uh, Rosa Sharon looking like uh, I don't know, kind of like small trees almost and kind of um, trimmed up. So it looks like a multi-trunk tree. And then the dark lavender ended up right here. And so I guess that this one, this is a brand new one this year. It's an improved version of the regular lavender chiffon. It's got deeper lavender flowers, more rich color. The buds are huge. So they add a really interesting texture. I'm really excited about this one and I hope that it just goes to town and fills up this space right here. And I fully intended on the Caryopteris ending up in this general location, but I put a bunch of them on the west side. They look so good. And only one of them ended up out here and it's on the other side. So you just never know until you start to plant. See, this is where I put the other Beyond Midnight Caryopteris, and these are the ones that were looking uh, like they had been overwatered possibly. Uh, their root balls were incredibly wet and kind of smelly, but they look really good. I'm really encouraged. I think they're gonna like it there. And then I just added one to this spot right here because I've got a whole bunch of other things going on. There's the Queen Nectarine Hyssop, which has got a really pretty melon, kind of apricot colored bloom. These look like they could use some grooming. Yeah, we've got some dried up stems on these. Hang on. Looks a little better. Anyway, and then I've got a pink echinacea right over here. So having a little bit of cooling blue in between the melon color and the pink color, I think it's gonna be really nice. And then we still have a little room to do some kind of a ground cover sort of thing here. Along the west side here, you can see Benny and his crew are here still working on the stone and brick. Super excited to show you guys that. But over here, I found just the perfect spots to tuck in a little something that was exactly pretty much the size of this Caryopteris. It worked out perfectly. And to have that late season color in here is great. So we have some verbascum right behind it, which bloomed beautifully, I had really good luck with that. There's a Mary Rose David Austin. This is a button bush, the Sugar Shack. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's got the most beautiful glossy green leaves. We've got iris, and then we have a whole bunch of first year perennials. And first year perennials can look a little bit rough. You know, we've got some salvia that's just kind of fried. It needs to be cut back and come back fresh next year. There's some thrift in here for some early season color. We've got drops of Jupiter oregano, but you guys look, look at the blooms. Look at how beautiful those are. I didn't even realize that they would get these kind of long panicles like a bunch of them at the end of each stalk they're so pretty and then the stand by me lavender clematis and then as we work our way down we've got some sad these are the raspberry beret echinacea oh i hope they survive they just have been kind of struggling here so i popped one of them kind of in the middle of this drift so hopefully we have pink echinacea coming up on both sides Midnight Masquerade Penstemon right behind. And then this is a Brandywine Viburnum right here, which it looks like it is forming up some gorgeous clusters of berries. That's exciting. Beautiful fall color on this one. And then there's other spaces here that I wanna tuck more iris, that kind of texture in this area. So uh, the next Caryopteris is down this way. I could have put one here, but I've got a Budlia nearby and they're similar in bloom color and structure. So I didn't want to do too many too close. There he goes with some extra stone. Okay, the other three in this space, I've got one here. We've got three, uh, what is the name of this rose? Oh my gosh, I just planted them. The Alnwick Rose, Ugh, right? <laughs> I think that's right. Anyway, so I tucked one in on the left of this one to the right or like in between these two. And then there's a third right here next to some other perennials that are tired and need to be cut back. And so anyway, I'm just really excited for how everything is shaping up in this area. I think next year we're gonna have it completely full and it's gonna be awesome. Also, I don't know what possessed me. Why, <laughs> why did I plant a single dahlia right here? There's no other dahlias in this area. Why did I do that? Sometimes I question my decision-making abilities. It's got a real pretty bloom on it though, look at that. 
That's gorgeous. It's totally in the way of this container here. Okay guys, so now that we've got our planting done, uh, I am going to head into the studio. I'm gonna repot those little violets that we rooted this uh, winter. I put some leaves in a tray and about half of them took, which is good because I forgot to water the tray. My gosh, sometimes. You know, things just slip through the cracks and they were on a bottom shelf in there. And you know, once spring rolls around and we're super busy with annual planting and things like that, things like that just happen. But I mean, I was grooming these violets anyway. I stuck the leaves in the soil. We did it in a video. Uh, so it was either toss the leaves or try to root them and having, you know, half of them take, that's awesome. Okay. In the studio, the violets have been living down here <laughs> ever since we started this project. Let's bring them to the table here. Okay, so some of them, there's even two little babies, which we can separate. Actually, there's a lot of multiple babies in here. Wow. So, you know, we started off with a leaf, which this one right here isn't looking so great, but I think it was trying to root at one point because it's in there fairly solidly. And then there's like this one right here which uh, sprouted new babies right here. So we'll be able to take this up out of here and remove the leaf like that. <laughs> it just came off. And then we'll separate the babies and pot them up. I'm so excited about this. I've got to find my little, my tongs. I've got tongs that are specific for these trays. I think they might be in the greenhouse. Here they are. While I'm at it, I'm gonna grab some African violet soil. We won't need very much. I try to pick my way through the sea of potatoes. We're curing them right now. And I don't know if I have any violet food. Oh, I do. Good, good, good. See these tongs you can get in here and pop your plants out without wrecking anything. I used to use, and I still use, if this is what I have on hand, but I have this little shovel too, which makes it fairly easy, you know, to get in there and get stuff out. So what I did, you guys, if you didn't happen to catch this video, which maybe we can link it down below when I actually loaded this tray up, I had a bunch of violets that looked like this, that had some like questionable leaves on the outside, um, and, and or they were nice looking leaves, and I just wanted to kind of groom up the plant. So I removed all of the leaves. Oh, I've got an earwig in that one. <gasps> Oh, nope, not today, not today. I'm gonna probably make some people mad for killing that earwig. Earwigs are the worst, they're the worst. Anyways, I took the leaves off and then popped them in some soil and watered them in and domed it and just left them alone and then left them for maybe a little bit too long because you know some of them perished and didn't survive. Um, usually you don't water them until you start seeing some sprouting but we're pretty dry here so typically for us you want to water them just a little bit more than than maybe average but i'm super happy with this so what i'm going to do is work on filling up these containers right here with african violet soil um yeah i'll try to get some close-up shots so you can see what i'm doing but i'm hoping in the end to have a bunch of cute little terracotta pots full of baby violets okay let's just see how easy this is There's one, and there's the second one. That one had a much bigger root system. This one's still attached to the original stem, which you can see right here. Interesting. Okay, I am gonna need to dampen this soil because this bag has been open for a while and it's really hard to use super dry soil. So we're gonna put it in this bucket and go get some water. See? Kind of just like seed starting mix. We just wanna add a little bit of moisture, not so much that there's water, just, you know, sop and wet water, uh, but just to where the soil kind of holds together a little bit.
guys, all done. I am amazed at how many violets came out of this tray. So 24 count tray right here. We've got 42 violet babies. I mean, and given the fact that about only half of these cells were filled, that's pretty amazing. Now this one right here, so you can see the leaf is still attached. I couldn't see these leaves before I took it out of its container. Um, and I popped it out just to see what was going on under there. And there's a couple of babies forming. So we're just gonna let that go on. I ran out of uh, terracotta, clearly. So I went ahead and just put them in these little pots and we can keep them in these trays in here for a little bit. And when I was all done repotting, uh, I went ahead and fertilized because it's been a minute since I've done that. And I did water them from overhead. So I tried really hard to avoid their leaves. I think I only got a couple of drops on them to in total, which is not bad. Uh, but I just wanted to settle the soil in around their roots. Most of them had a decent root system. There were just a couple of them with smaller root systems, but not bad. Most of them had a good one. And this says repeat every two to four weeks, which is about right. Typically I keep a, well, you know, I hope to keep a once a month fertilizing schedule for most all of the house plants. Not saying that I do that every single month, but you know, we try. Some of these are just incredible. And some of them, you know, that were in with others kind of looked a little bit sad, but I think now that they're on their own um, and not competing with other babies in the same tray, I think they'll do really well and they'll flourish. So I'm very pleased with this whole project. I mean, it's been a while. I can't remember when we did this project. It was this winter at some point. It's just so easy to do. I mean, rooting straight in soil, not even in water. So you skip that step. Um, that way you can let them stay in the soil for longer until you, you know, separate them out. Usually when they're in water, I feel like I need to get them into soil right away when I start seeing roots. And, you know, sometimes you don't have time to do that. So I typically, typically like to root things in soil. These are going to go back under the grow lights in here because they're used to the temperature in here. Um, they're used to that light situation and I do, don't really want to change too much on them. I mean, because I just ripped them out of their, their cozy little homes and ripped them apart. Uh, so that's enough shock on their system for now. So we'll let them root into these containers. Um, I will go get more little terracotta because I think these would be really sweet to have in the Hartley. Just have a big section with violets. I think that'd be really pretty. And you guys, I think that's going to be it for today. I was going to do some extra maintenance outside, but um, my projects took me a little bit longer than I thought and I'm going to get dinner started. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.